Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be welding with 532 6013. I have very little experience with it. We're not going to brush this off, I don't guess. I think, is it 6011 or 6013 that I've heard that is supposed to weld through, you know, like rust or whatever. It's supposed to weld, weld better on uh, rust, unclean material. I don't remember which it is, but if you remember, let us know down in the comments below, or if you know. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to uh, try it out for myself. Don't brush anything and just see, see how it welds. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to have my machine turned up. I've got it on 150 over here on this knob, and I've got it on 80 over here on my fine turn. That's a 2012 SAE 300. All right, dim the lights. And I forgot to take notes when I was reading comments. Uh, whenever I did well with this a little bit in a previous video, those of you told me um, if this was just a flat rod or you know overhead or whatever, I believe if I remember right, I could be wrong about this, but if I remember right, it's not weld. It's not made to weld overhead. It's just made to weld flat. So we're gonna put a tack right here. See, it still feels cold. But I am welding on a piece of half inch plate to a piece of quarter inch pipe here. So that could be some of the issue. It smells like 6013. Well, it actually held, that's good. We'll turn my machine up a little more. I left it in the 150 range, but I put it all the way up to 100. There's not much point to this video other than just messing around with 6013. That is the craziest thing because it does not feel like you're getting that. Because I'm used to 7018. 7018 you can you can tell by the by the puddle and the slag that you're you know what I mean? You can you can kind of read it better, but with this it's all fuzzy. Uh, and like I said, it's really reminds me of 7014. And I, and I, I want to turn it up, but I don't. It looks all right, so I don't know if I need to. Uh, I think I will turn it up, just because, like I said, we're just messing around. We're learning here, so let's turn it up. From 150 range to right in between, right between the A and the R on the the word course. So between 150 and 220. Try to get a better view over here hopefully you'll be able to see this see how that flag just all Whirling around and stuff. Now I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but you couldn't really see it whenever I was coming around this way, or I don't think you could see it. You may have been able to. But the only way that I feel confident that I'm doing anything is by taking my rod back and forth like no matter what the puddle's doing no matter what that swirly flux is doing like even though it's swirling and stuff as long as I'm just making sure I'm touching this rod to each piece of metal kind of doing a little horseshoe or you know just back and forth zigzag kind of probably more like a horseshoe is what I'm doing but 
I can feel it, you know, if you just focus on your fingertips, you know, in your stinger, you can literally, you can literally feel it in your fingertips. Whenever you touch the edge, you can, you can feel your the side of your welding rod touching the, the metal. So as long as you're touching it, that's actually something I kind of learned on pipeline, believe it or not. Because downhill welding can get a little hairy sometimes in a tight bevel and whatnot. So you kind of learn just to, well you learn all kinds of things, but I learned to just move my rod back and forth, you know, no matter what the slag was doing. And that, that pretty much reassured me that I was, that I was tying into this because if my rod, if I could feel my rod touching it, most likely it was tying it in, you know. I'm not saying it's a foolproof, foolproof method, but sure enough. Tied in a lot better than it looks in your slag, but I do have, I believe, some undercut on top here. And I would venture to say that's because, yeah, it's real low here. Uh, I'd venture to say that's because I'm too hot, but like I said, I, I don't feel like I'm... The slag is making me want to turn it up, but from the results of my weld, I clearly need to turn it down. So I'm going to go turn it back down to 80 and run this, run this other side. And I'm also going to brush this off, see if that makes a difference. Do a little kind of a whip action. A whip and kind of a circle motion. One thing that I just thought of that's going against me is the uh, size of welding rod. It's 532. That's that's a size bigger than a 1/8, and I would normally weld this with 332, 7018, and so this is awfully big welding rod to be making this kind of weld. But I still got that slide undercut on the on the top. See right in here on this side. I can't say it made a huge difference uh, cleaning it, like the way it ran or the way the you know the results of it here looks pretty well the same as over here where we didn't clean it. I believe this is all I could find online was 532 is why I got 532 versus like 332, but. Anyway, anyway, there you have it. I'd say my biggest takeaway from welding this right here is to weld with a smaller diameter of welding rod with this 6013. As far as this type of weld, you know, uh, what do they call that, a fillet weld? Welding flat, this would be all right. On something this thick, if it was much thinner than quarter inch, I'd probably definitely still want to jump down to a 1 8 or a 332, so. Reminds me of the 7014. If you haven't seen the 7014 video, my first time welding with 7014, uh, you can check out this video here. For more helpful resources, check out our website, arosswelding.com, and check out our online trade school, arosswelding.school. We've got a couple of courses over there. We're working on a third one. Learn how to build pipe fence for you or a customer. Build your very own welding rig quick and in a hurry with the Quick Rig course. And if you want to learn how to brand and market your own welding business whether you're just starting one or you need to refine the one that you've had for a few years you'll want to check out the boomtown your business branding marketing course i'm austin ross thanks for watching and remember 
learn something every day.